First, I have to disclose that I'm mostly a researcher kind of scientist, not a presenter kind of scientist. <laughs> but <laughs> recently, I did give a presentation at a conference, and the video was uploaded on YouTube. And the video got a comment that kind of hit me. So I decided to make that comment to the subtitle of my talk. And it was like, it's almost criminal how this information is not more known and talked about. So here I am presenting again. <laughs> so here I'm going to talk about some of the key mechanisms by which ketones can enhance brain function. We will talk about ketone metabolic therapies for neuroprotection and also the potential role of ketone supplementation for neuroregeneration. Also very important to distinguish different kinds of exogenous ketone formulations, especially regarding their safety and efficacy. And I'm also going to discuss a couple misconceptions about ketones. I started doing ketone-related research about 15 years ago when I joined a project about central nervous system oxygen toxicity that was led by Dr. Dominic D'Agostino. And the Office of Navy Research funded this study to predict and prevent oxygen-caused seizures in Navy SEAL divers who were breathing 100% oxygen under high pressure underwater. So we could simulate these diving conditions using hyperbaric chambers. And we were diving rats in these hyperbaric chambers to simulate this situation. And the goal was to develop something that can acutely help the brain to prevent these oxidative stress-induced seizures. Not only Navy divers are exposed to this danger, but also people who are doing a hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So if you think that this scenario is not very common, then just bear with me. The main goal was here to protect the brain from oxidative stress-induced seizures. So prior to the 1960s, it was thought that the brain can only use glucose for fuel. So they did an experiment at the Harvard University where they fasted people for 40 days, which probably today wouldn't be approved, and they found that the subject's brain used almost 60% ketones as fuel. After that, they administered insulin to some of the subjects, and they saw that they were completely asymptomatic, even with severe hypoglycemia, because the ketones could preserve the brain energy metabolism. <laughs> 